Good morning and welcome to our service together this morning. We're going to sing three giving voice songs. And I just want to suggest that this is a good time on Zoom to practice your harmonizing. So I hope you're trying that at home. Meditation on breathing has a melody verse and two different desk counts. And we're going to sing through those, each of those two times. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. And I'm introducing a new one to you today called So in Tears, Weep in Joy. Debbie Friedman, the songwriter, calls this a ruach, which means breath or spirit in a living creature. And we're going to sing through this three times so you kind of get a feel for it. Those who sow, who sow in tears, will reap in joy, will reap in joy. Those who sow, who sow in tears, will reap in joy, will reap in joy. Those who sow, who sow in tears, will reap in joy, will reap in joy. Those who sow, who sow in tears, will reap in joy, will reap in joy. Those who sow, who sow in tears, will reap in joy, will reap in joy. Those who sow, who sow in tears, will reap in joy, will reap in joy. Peace is flowing like a river, flowing out of you and me, flowing out into the desert. Let it flow and make you free. Love is flowing like a river, flowing out of you and me, flowing out into the desert. Let it flow and make you free. Hope is flowing like a river, flowing out of you and me, flowing out into the desert. Let it flow and make you free. 
Dreams are flowing like a river, flowing out of you and me, flowing out into the desert. Let it flow and make you free. Peace is flowing like a river, flowing out of you and me, flowing out into the desert. Let it flow and make you free. Good morning and welcome everyone to White Bear Unitarian Universalist Church. I am Lisa Borg, serving on your board of directors. We are a congregation in the free faith tradition, a community of youth, adults, and children dedicated to the pluralism and spiritual search and ethics grounded in action. Service participants today include Jack Gady, Amy Peterson Derrick, Sarah Goodman, Carol Cowett, and supported by Anna Garris and Aaron Scott. Music today is from Carol Cowett and Craig Hansen, and from the WBUUC Choir, directed by Thaxter Cuneo. Today, after the service at 1115, we hope you will join us for Cyber Social Hour. We'll put the Zoom link and easy instructions in the chat box. Welcome to our church. Together, we grow our souls and serve the world. Come in, come into this space which we make holy by our presence. Come in with all your vulnerabilities and strengths, fears and anxieties, loves and hopes. For here you need not hide nor pretend nor be anything other than who you are and who you are called to be. Come into this space where we can heal and be healed, forgive and be forgiven. Come into this space where the ordinary is sanctified, the human is celebrated, the compassionate is expected. Come into this space. Together we make it a holy space. Welcome. Cheryl Riley will light our chalice. Good morning. As a journalism major and writer, stories are immensely important to me. Maybe that's why I have a tendency when I meet new people to interview them. I love to hear their stories. Not everyone is comfortable sharing, however, while others may want to tell all. Some reach for their past. Some want to convey a significant occasion or a special memory. Some want to talk about others. I'm not sure you can define for anyone how to tell their story. After all, it is their story. So I like to just start with a few questions. Tell me about yourself, very open-ended. What do you do? More specific, are you married? Do you have children? Very specific. All have a way of opening the conversation. Then I listen and I'm always amazed at where it goes from there. Now that I'm retired, my sense of time has changed and I no longer have so many urgent things that I have to attend to so why not listen? And I always learn something about the other person. What story do you tell if someone says, tell me about yourself? Have you thought about what you'd first reveal? What you want to share? Well, just imagine that I'm asking you that question now. Join me in our opening words. Love is the spirit of this church and service is its law. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love and to help one another. 
Join us now in singing our hymn with Carol, Comfort Me, which is in Singing the Living Tradition, number 1002. Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, O oh my soul. Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, O oh my soul. Sing with me, sing with me. Sing with me, O oh my soul. Sing with me, sing with me. Sing with me, O oh my soul. Speak for me, speak for me. Speak for me, O oh my soul. Speak for me, speak for me, speak for me, O oh my soul. Dance with me, dance with me, dance with me, O oh my soul. Dance with me, dance with me, dance with me, oh my soul. Good morning. As Unitarian Universalists, we draw wisdom from many different sources including the stories of our Unitarian Universalist and Unitarian Universalist faith ancestors. Today, I share with you a story about a Universalist preacher named John Murray and how the love and care and presence of others can help us find our way, even when we least expect it. John was born and raised in England and Ireland and grew up to be a great public speaker and preacher. John was always curious about new ideas and was eager to learn new things. One of the new ideas that John and his wife Eliza learned of was an idea called universalism. This was the idea that all people were beloved of God, no matter what. The more they learned of universalism, the more John went out to preach the gospel of love. But things quickly changed for John when he was driven away from his church by people who did not agree with his message. He eventually became indebted and was arrested. And then he unexpectedly lost his infant son and wife to illness. John was so sad. He was angry. He was devastated. He didn't know what to do with his broken heart. He was so sad and angry that he wasn't even sure what he believed anymore. And so he decided that he would never preach again. And while John's closest friends begged him to continue preaching, John instead decided that what he wanted most was the life of solitude he had heard he could find across the ocean in the colonies. And so he boarded a ship called the Hand in Hand bound for New York. But yet again, John faced the unexpected when the ship landed far from its intended destination of New York and became stranded on a sandbar outside of a small town called Good Luck, New Jersey. Well, needless to say, John did not at all feel that he had landed upon any kind of good luck. The crew knew that they would be stranded until the winds changed again, for ships in that time depended on the wind to sail. And so not knowing how long they would be stranded, John was charged to go ashore to look for food and supplies for him and the crew. Soon, John came across a farm not far from shore, and there he was greeted by a farmer named Thomas Potter. Thomas welcomed John with open arms, saying that he had been waiting for him. He provided John with enough food for everyone on the hand in hand. 
And as Thomas Potter learned more about John Murray and his story and the journey that led him to the shores of good luck, the more Thomas became convinced that John really was the person that he had been waiting for. You see, Thomas had himself heard the message of universalism many years before and was so convinced that the world needed to hear the loving message of universalism that he built a small chapel on his own farm with the hopes that one day a universalist preacher might come to fill it. But for 10 long years, the pulpit had remained empty even while Thomas Potter had sought preachers. So, as you can imagine, while John Murray felt stranded by the wind, Thomas Potter believed that the wind had brought him a wonderful gift, the preacher he had been looking for. And so he begged John Murray to stay. John Murray remained unsure. He had vowed to never preach again and was eager to begin his new life of solitude in New York. Though he was a gifted preacher, he wasn't really looking for a new pulpit or a new congregation or even a new friend. But after much convincing, Thomas Potter was able to get the reluctant John Murray to make a deal. If the wind had not changed by the following Sunday, John Murray agreed that he would stay and preach. And what do you think happened? Well, the wind did not change. And on that Sunday, about 250 years ago, on September 30th, 1770, John Murray preached his first sermon in America in the small chapel that Thomas Potter built. The wind changed soon after, and John Murray boarded the ship and sailed on to New York. John came back not long after to visit his new unexpected friend and to preach again in Thomas Potter's chapel. And in fact, John Murray began preaching all over the East Coast and established the first Universalist church in Massachusetts, bringing his love, his message of love with him wherever he went. Please join me in a spirit of prayer and meditation. Take a moment to sink into your seat. Notice the depth or shallowness of your breath. Relax your shoulders away from your ears and be calm and open to the present moment. Thinking of the whole virtual community gathered this morning, we hold out our open palms and feel the weight of our congregation. We feel the heaviness of the burdens we carry. And we also feel the strength in our spirits ready and able to complete the tasks ahead of us. We have so many ancestors, people who champion courage, justice, and universal messages of love. We are also descended from people with less than stellar records of justice and equity, people who stole and harmed, people who failed to honor treaties and who undervalued human life and dignity. Our ancestry is complex and it includes stardust. We come from the same stuff that makes up the stars. And that stardust also lived in John Murray, Thomas Potter, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, John Lewis, and the former co-moderator of the UUA, Alondria Williams, who passed away this week. May they rest in peace and in power May we continue to learn from their legacies, honor their histories, and take up the mantles they left behind. Let's take a moment to honor the ancestors who came before us, who continue to shape our lives, those who live on in our memories. Say their names out loud in honor and reverence. We also honor those living among us in this present moment, the living ancestors and the living descendants, the people that comprise our human family in all of its messy complexity. We know that the people around us are experiencing the, the full gamut of human emotion, joy and sorrow, loss, success, grief, pleasure, happiness, sickness, 
health, fear, and hope. In this very moment, we breathe together. And we meditate on the people in our lives who need support and comfort. We think about and bless the people in our lives who have been giving support and love. We take another breath and we ask for a blessing for those folks on our hearts and in our minds, speaking their names out loud. To all these prayers, spoken and unspoken, we give our intention. With our palms still open before us, we feel the weight of this community. We feel that our communal burden has been slightly lifted. Our connections to each other helping to hold us up, strengthening our resolve. So be it, and amen. In these times, your financial support for our congregation matters more than ever. Please be generous. first reading, Watching My Friend Pretend Her Heart Isn't Breaking by Rosemary Watola Traumer. On Earth, just a teaspoon of neutron star would weigh six billion tons. Six billion tons equals the collective weight of every animal on Earth, including the insects, times three. Six billion tons sounds impossible, until I consider how it is to swallow grief. Just a teaspoon and one might as well have consumed a neutron star. How dense it is, how it carries inside it the memory of collapse, how difficult it is to move then, how impossible to believe that anything could lift that weight. There are many reasons to treat each other with great tenderness, one, is the sheer miracle that we are here together on a planet surrounded by dying stars. One is that we cannot see what anyone else has swallowed. Our second reading, Prayer for the Morning by Audette Fulbright. Did you rise this morning, broken and hung over with weariness and pain and rage tattered from waving too long in a brutal wind? Get up, child. Pull your bones upright. Gather your skin and muscle into a patch of sun. Draw breath deep into your lungs. You will need it 
for another day calls to you. I know you ache. I know you wish the work were done and you, with everyone you have ever loved, were on a distant shore, safe and unafraid. But remember this, tired as you are, you are not alone. Here and here and here also, there are others weeping and rising and gathering their courage. You belong to them and they to you. And together we will break through and bend the arc of justice all the way down into our lives. We're about to hear some music from our virtual choir. And as you've been learning, it takes many people behind the scenes and many hours in front of the camera to produce a beautiful video. So thank you to all involved. Some of my earliest memories are of presence, of place. My very first memory is of the inside of the WC, w, mm, YWCA swimming pool. All classic brickwork and arches and echoes. Some of my earliest memories are of the sounds of a place that was mine listening to new age music from my fort under the massage table in my dad's office, listening to the thwang of the wires that held the table together, the sound that it made when I plucked them like guitar strings. And in retrospect, that might not have been the most relaxing sound when my dad was giving massages to clients. A memory of a place that was mine listening to the waves crash at the beach for hours, running my fingers through the warm sand and then suddenly the waves were too loud and it wouldn't feel like mine anymore. Hearing my mom cry in another room in our house, going to her, hugging her as she wept. I listened a lot. When I was a kid growing up as an only child of divorced parents, I spent a lot of time with adults and a lot of time alone. I got very familiar with doing my own thing while the adults around me were talking or working. Folks now, they call it parallel play, where two people in the same space doing their own thing but are together. I got really good at it and I still enjoy it to this day. I would sit sometimes lonely in my dorm room 
until my friend down the hall would invite me to her room to do our homework together. She would be painting and I would be reading. We just enjoyed being in each other's presence. One of the things I learned over my early life is that presence, the physical or emotional presence of someone I trust makes all the difference to my well being. If I could just hear the sound of my mom's voice on the phone, I'd be okay. If I could sit and watch a movie with my friends or write our sermons in a coffee shop with a classmate or watch our children play from the same bench at the playground, I would be okay. Let me just say, this pandemic is so lonely. I am so fortunate to have my best friend, my co-parent, my husband by my side through this time. We support and care for each other every day, but I am acutely aware of the isolation and loss so many people are experiencing. The presence of others is so important to our well being. Loving physical touch is vital to human well being, and too many of us are not able to get those needs met. We need to be reminded of our interconnectedness, our interdependence within the web of existence. Many of us are finding the sense of connectedness through the experience outdoors. We're more than ever soaking up every last bit of sun, going into nature, watching the leaves change color. And as we see the leaves change, as we anticipate coming winter, some of us, well, some of you are making plans. I have been tucking my head in the sand and pretending it's still summer. I could until a couple of days ago with the weather so nice, but not much longer. Since we can't go the places we normally go to be together, since we cannot spend as much time outdoors as the winter cold descends upon us, we need to make contingency plans. Rachel Miller is deputy director of Vice Life and the author of The Art of Showing Up, How to Be There for Yourself and Your People. In her recent article, if you're already dreading winter, here are some small ways to prepare now. She asks, what can you do to ensure that you stay social? She says, I think a lot of people are reasonably worried about feeling extra lonely and isolated this winter. One suggestion, if you have a few not super close friends who you could really click with and who you could invest a little more time and attention in, that might be a good move right now. Going this route can be easier than trying to make a bunch of new friends or attempting to stay in touch with everyone you've ever met. She also says, if the standing video hangouts you were all about last spring have fallen by the wayside, get them back on the calendar ASAP so they become part of everyone's routine. This might also be a good time to find a pen pal, connect with your neighbors, or get in the habit of calling people on the phone. And I'm gonna add, now might be the time to remember that church is still happening that we still meet every week, more than once every week, not in person, but on Zoom here like this, and sometimes even seeing each other's faces. I might be the only one in this sanctuary today, but I am not the only one in this church. Zoom may not feel the same as in person. We know it's not, we know, but it is better than not seeing each other at all. Now, may be the time to call up your church friends that you haven't seen online and check in or send a card or send an email, although email is rough right now, so don't expect too much reply. We are a community, a community of care and compassion. We are connected, interconnected, and sometimes all we need to remember that is presence. The presence of another's face on a screen, the presence of another's voice on the phone line, 
the presence of letters arriving in mailboxes, we can and must be present to each other this year more than ever before. We are, some of us, struggling. Some of us struggling with loneliness, some of us struggling with working while parenting and educating our children at the same time. Some of us are struggling in relationships that aren't built to be in such close quarters for so long. Some of us are struggling with job loss, some with too much to handle. Some of us, many of us are struggling with the election and what the outcome could mean for our country. Some of us are struggling with the death of loved ones, the ending of relationships, with grief that is so heavy on our hearts, like swallowing the weight of a teaspoon of a neutron star. How dense it is, how it carries inside it the memory of collapse how difficult it is to move then, how impossible to believe that anything could lift that weight, says the poet. There are many reasons to treat each other with great tenderness. One is the sheer miracle that we are here together on a planet surrounded by dying stars. One is that we cannot see what anyone else has swallowed. In times of distress and struggle, it is easy to get caught up in the stress and strain of our lives. It is easy to drive too fast or react too angrily when, when met with a new struggle. It is easy to break down crying in the middle of the grocery store. It is easy to think that we are alone. We need to treat each other with great tenderness. We don't know what anyone else has swallowed. We are a people who need one another's presence. We are a people who need to be held when grief overwhelms us. We are a people who need to sit by someone's bedside as they're dying, who need to gather in grief and joy. We are people who need to be together. And when we can't be physically together, we need to find other ways. In my training for pastoral care, I have again and again learned the lesson that presence makes all the difference. Presence in this case means deep listening, deep caring, deeply seeing the other person, treating them as whole and holy. This presence is just as important on the phone or over Zoom as it is being in person. Bringing and sharing with someone a book of poetry that they love or you love, or singing some of someone's favorite songs with them can be one of the more meaningful experiences with someone who is suffering. I know that many of you are from the Midwest where the culture is one of suck it up, and do the thing yourself. Now more than ever, we have to examine, re-examine that belief. Now more than ever, we need to be able to reach out to someone and ask for help. If you need assistance with food or rent, or if you just need someone to talk to, give us a call. Send us an email. We're not scary or judgmental. We want to help. There are even members of the congregation who are trained to listen to you without judgment. We call them our pastoral care companions. Our pastoral care companions are trained and skilled in deep listening, in hearing from you about you and leaving it at that. Our pastoral care companions are eager to hear about your heartache or how wonderful it is to have a new grandbaby or baby, and yet how hard it is to be a parent or a grandparent in the pandemic. Our pastoral care companions are trained not to talk about what you tell them with anyone else unless you tell them to share with one of our ministers. 
Our pastoral team also coordinates writing cards to folks who are having a hard time or experiencing a joy. We are also able to mobilize folks in the congregation to help provide meals for those who are in the middle of a short-term crisis. But we can't do those things if we don't know you need them. We are a community of love, a community of care, a group of people who are deeply interconnected and take care of each other. So here I am asking for your help. I'm modeling the behavior. I need your help. Yes, you. I need you to understand that your needs are important too. I need you to offer help to others as much as you can and make the commitment to take and make your needs a priority in your life. I need you to drop me an email or give me a call if you need to talk to someone or Victoria or Jack or your trusted friends or chosen family or family of origin if they're close to you. Just remember you are not alone. Hear this prayer for the morning, this morning and every morning by Audette Fulbright. Did you rise this morning broken and hung over with weariness and pain and rage? Tattered from waving too long in a brutal wind? Get up, child. Pull your bones upright, gather your skin and muscle into a patch of sun. Draw breath deep into your lungs. You will need it for another day calls to you. I know you ache. I know you wish the work were done and you with everyone you have ever loved were on a distant shore, safe and unafraid. But remember this, tired as you are, you are not alone. Here and here and here also are there others weeping and rising and gathering their courage. You belong to them and they to you and together we will break through and bend the arc of justice all the way down into our lives. May it be so. Join me in a time of silence. Now let's all join Carol in singing our hymn, Strong is What We Make Each Other, by Mary Grigolia. Strong is what we make each other. Strong is what we make each other. Flowing through me, flowing through you, breathing life. Breathing life, pain and vision intertwining, pain and vision intertwining, flowing through me, flowing through you, breathing life, breathing life. Love and justice guide our journey. Love and justice guide our journey. Flowing through me, flowing through you. Breathing life, breathing life. Join, join me in saying the closing words. May peace dwell within our hearts and understanding in our minds. May courage steal our will and love of truth forever guide us.
Friends, thank you for joining us. If you're not receiving our email news, go to our website and sign up. We'll send updates twice a week about groups and gatherings, updates from the board of directors and more. And as Sarah said, call or write with questions or to ask for help or to offer help. We need each other more than ever right now. And please join us today at 1115 for Cyber Social Hour. It's a wonderful opportunity to connect with others in the congregation, to make new connections or rekindle old ones. We hope to see you there. We're sending love to all of you from all of our locations. Stay well, stay connected, stay resilient, everyone. So be it, see to it. Amen. <laughs>